1999 saw Slipknot release their debut self-titled album. This album changed the way the whole world viewed extreme music. Let's take a look at how Jim Root and Mick Thompson created their tones. Quick disclaimer, all these riffs are completely my own, though not from Slipknot self-titled. But they probably could have been. Life is a prison! I remember being introduced to Slipknot. Uh, I was a brand new kid at a brand new school. Uh, it was 1999, end of the year. As I said, I was the new kid at school. I absolutely hated life. I had no friends. I had no direction. I didn't know what I wanted to even do at that stage. I couldn't play guitar very well. This album came along. It steered me into extreme music. It set up a whole new direction for me to take in life. So let's take a quick listen to my recreation of the ferocious sounds on Slipknot Self-Titled. As you just heard, we absolutely nailed this one. Uh, tones are pretty much dead on and perfect. Hmm. Like the last Slipknot breakdown I did, uh, the band recorded with Ross Robinson. That's important to mention because I have said this in another video, but each guitar is um, it's panned one left, one right just like you'd hear in a live setting. Ross is huge on capturing the band's core sound. So what you hear is one take from start to finish, flaws and all, uh, the mistakes add to the sound. And if you listen carefully, you're going to hear mistakes in the official recording and release. Like that's a fact. Just listen to the lossless files uh, you can listen to them on Apple Music now. You will hear errors. You'll hear them go out of time from the click. It's real. It's raw music. So what we'll do is I'll play the guitars on their own. One guitar followed by the next. Uh, we'll do Jim's first followed by mix. And then we'll have a chat about the amps. Uh, I'll play them both together in a mix so you can hear it again. And then I'll explain a little bit more. There is a little bit to get through for this, but it's well worth it. Uh, yeah, just enjoy. It's it's a good one. Just before I do play the sounds, um, if you enjoy what I'm doing, please just hit the subscribe button. Uh, there'll be lots of regular updated content, uh, mainly focused on black metal and extreme music. Uh, yeah, here we go. Guitars by themselves. First of the two tones we'll break down is mix. Uh, that was the second guitar tone you heard in the little sound clip I just played. Okay, Mick used a Rocktron Piranha multi effects preamp. I picked one up for a little under $200 on eBay. It wasn't hard to find and it is old. So I'm sure if you want to recreate this tone on your own, you can pick one up for fairly cheap. So the Rocktron Piranha, how's it sound? Uh, to me, it's really, really aggressive. It's a little muddy, and I do know that on the album, Mick used a, a 10 band a EQ. Um, this was to take away harsh frequencies. It does also tighten up the sound a little bit. Well, not a little bit. It does tighten up the sound. Um, I did this in my door 
because I don't have a 10 band on me like a pedal and I didn't want to put it through a loop. I simply put the preamp straight into, as you can see, the Baron Custom back there. I put it through the loop and use the power amp from that amp when tracking. I don't know if I'd play the Piranha for anything else but this. I'm actually going to sell it. I didn't enjoy it personally. It's an aggressive sound, but it's just not there. It's not up to today's standards. So before we break down Jim Root's tone, uh, let's just quickly hear those two guitars in the mix again, just to refresh your memory. Jim Root used a Laney Pro Tube lead. Now, I hadn't uh, had any hands-on experience with this amp before. I'd only ever seen sort of like Doom bands playing them, so I never even considered getting one or borrowing one like I did. Um, the amp, though, I did find out is just a, it's a, basically a JCM 800 at heart. So I didn't have any trouble dialing in the tone I was looking for. No, I take that back. Um, I did have uh, spend a little while because I worked out, I don't think, well, I'm pretty sure there was no boost used on this. Uh, pretty familiar with bands like Slayer and Meta early Metallica using the 800. It's one of my favorite amps, so I've had a lot of hands-on experience with that amp. And I can tell you there was no 10 band used and I'm pretty sure it's not boosted. It sounds thick in the mix. It doesn't sound completely tight. Uh, this amp is, you gotta give props to Jim because his sound is controlled and he is not a sloppy player at all. And that would have came through quite easily on this raw record, the way it was captured by Ross. So the core takeaway from this video, it's a very, very valuable lesson. Uh, performance is key. Expensive gear can't help you write a song that people are going to be able to sit down, enjoy and listen to. Um, this album was tracked with a Piranha by Rocktron preamp. It's a cheap multi-effects unit and a JCM 800 clone. Uh, that's proof. So I hope you can take away from this video. I hope you've learned something. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing. And I do have plenty of other videos in that realm too. This is a black metal extreme music focused channel. So be sure to hang around, watch another video. It's going to pop up to my side any second now. Um, or it's probably already up there. There's a little picture of my face. Hit that. That subscribes. It'll keep you up to date. I had a hell of a lot of fun doing this one. Check my other videos as I've just stated and see you next time.